Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me is my good friend, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing, man? Good to see you, Harrison. Yeah, so it's been a little while since we've been able to get together yeah. on this. Life yeah, I missed you, buddy. I hear you. Yeah, you're you're moving. Um, and yeah, things have just been just hectic uh, on my end. Um, I just got off the phone uh, with a real, real good friend, and so um, it's it sort of spurned the the conversation I want to force upon you today. Uh, what does what does Jesus have to say about joy? Yeah. Well, real quick, just that you mentioned that we're moving. I want to make sure people understand we're not moving from our call just to a different house. And so sure. let's yeah, not terrify moving. the people that are listening. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my, my I apologize. Are all, <laughs> no, no, my first will be seeing this They're like, oh, my goodness, where's he going? No, no. So not leaving the church and like that, just moving to a different house. And so, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're brilliant here in North Dakota, moving in the, in January in North Dakota. I mean, that's that's just how when I moved all. to Iowa, too. It was. Yeah, there's something wrong with us. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. So speaking of joy then, right? Joy and happiness. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say that would be very important that we distinguish between the, the two things to begin with joy and happiness, sure. um, joy uh, versus happiness. Maybe even look at happiness and pleasure itself. Um, typically when I see happiness, I, I, I hear people in our society say this, you know, I have a right to be happy. Happiness has become uh, a right, um, something that we, 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 we need to have. And if we don't have, then there's some sort of injustice in the world. And so, as I think of happiness, I think it's something where, how do we say this? Maybe it's something where we try to reach out and grab and force, right? We try to force it upon ourselves, uh, force or make it work. Uh, it'd be like, uh, you know, forcing a party and, 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 and guilting and shaming people to come over or doing something in order to just create happiness. Whereas I would say joy is something that is received. Uh, joy is something that is given to you. Joy is something that happens can even happen in the midst of sadness. So uh, I was talking to our friend, Pastor Brademeyer, and he told me something too that I learned. He said, God doesn't give rights, he gives gifts. And that sort of fits into this, that um, if we think we have a right to happiness, well, then we have a right to whatever makes us happy. And some of those things, quite frankly, are sinful. Some of the things that make me real happy uh, go very clearly against God's commandments. But if God gives gifts, well, then it's not simply something that that I, I deserve, but it's something that he wants me to have. And that's... That's actually an important distinction because if we just want to go based on the things I deserve, like you can lose your rights. You ac you actually can. There are things that you can do to lose the right to freedom. If if you murder somebody, you're going to prison. Um, that that's going to that's going to happen. You might even you might even be put on the death penalty. Um, but God wants you to have joy so much that he he gives it to you. Um, and if he gives it to you, well, then it's a good gift that can en endure even the things that, uh, well, like you said, aren't so happy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I think happiness is fleeting, right? I mean, happiness is, is uh, it's here one moment then, right. And it's gone. Mm -hmm. And which is the reason why I think people are always pursuing happiness with such a uh, vigorous uh, pursuit of happiness is, is just to what to grab it and have. And then it seems like once you get happiness, right, you hold it and then you have it for just a small second, then it vanishes and then you spend the rest of your week chasing it down, trying to get it. And then you will destroy people left and right and step on people to get it. Whereas if we just pause and we pull the throttle back and we look at the gifts that we've been given, then that's where the joy is found. And again, it's like what you said, gifts are given. It's like last night, uh, I told my little seven-year-old, I said, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk with daddy. And so she held my hand and we went out to our new place. We have a couple of acres of land out there. And we went up a big, big hill to see the lights of Minot. Uh, we're a couple of miles out of town and I'm holding her hand. And she, 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 she put her head against my, the, my side here. And she says, I love you, daddy. Oh, that joy. And I'm like, and it's just like, my goodness, I have, I, I, I have my health. I have a family. I have a little girl that's seven years old who, who loves her daddy. And then she voiced that, uh, that, 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 that love to me, love you, daddy. And it's just this little crackly voice, love you, daddy on top of a hill when it's like five degrees out and we're out for a hike. And it's like, I couldn't have created that. That was a gift given to me. That was something the Lord bestowed upon me in my vocation as a father. And it was totally given to me as a gift. And I'm like, that's joy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not something that, that, that I made happen. It was something that happened to me. And so, yeah, I think, I think, unfortunately, in our society, I think so oftentimes we are so running after the pursuit of happiness, uh, trying to achieve and create happiness for us. That I think, unfortunately, many times we we miss the joy of the things that are given right before us, right before us. We miss it because we're so uh, determined to to uh, 
to wring out happiness in every little thing and every little pleasure of life that we fail to realize the joy of the gifts given to us. More and more, I think that's of the devil, um, that, that because he can't take away God's gifts. He can only make us sort of take our eyes off of them. And so uh, our, 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 our enemy doesn't want us to find joy in the church. And, and that's a place where it, all of a sudden it turns a gift into a burden. That, that's a place where uh, we can do it too inside of our families, where we, we lose sight of joy, that, that I get to go home to, to, uh, to my wife, to my kids. And, and like we can tell the stories of like the, the perfect little moment and the perfect little walk. But like there's also those stories where like it doesn't feel as joyous, where like I get home from work and I'm already stressed out because I'm a sinner. And my, my family, they happen to be sinners too. And then pretty soon we're sinning against each other and like there's also joy there um jesus says i i am i'm coming to you that your joy may be full um and, and that's then no longer contingent upon a condition or how everybody's behaving which is good uh but on whether or not our lord is present and near us I, and that means that when we lose sight of joy in the church uh we we stop finding the gifts to be gifts when we lose sight of joy in our families we start to see that the gifts as as burdens um and one of the things that our lord actually insists that we have is joy i think because he wants us not only to find the good inside of the creation that he gives us but he wants us to know the victory mm -hmm. yeah you know and, and and i would say that that Joy can be in the present moment, but joy is also an anticipation of gifts that are be yeah. going to be given. Uh, yeah. And so we can have joy in the midst of a funeral, in the midst of death itself. And uh, the, 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 man, the anger and the tears can pour forth in the midst of sorrow, the death of a loved one. And in the midst of that, you have that glimmer of hope that in a twinkling of an eye, uh, these mortal bodies will be raised from the tomb and that will resurrect to life immortal uh, in, in Christ's sight, uh, never to cry again, never to have pain, never to have uh, the fear of death. And so in the midst of that, we can have that glimmer of joy, anticipating the gifts that are going to be uh, soon coming uh, to us, uh, that that will be soon given to us. And so we can have this anticipation of joy, of eternal joy uh, that is that is set before us. But yeah, I think I think you know, it's, it, it, it comes down to you know, it is quite sad too, and I, and I totally hear what you're saying. That that there are times where the gifts that we've been given, these these beautiful gifts we've been given, become become a burden and uh, become overwhelmed. And uh, you know, the, the life has a way of doing that, grinding that out on um, the sinful yeah. world that we live in. And the devil has a way of taking these gifts and perverting them and making them into uh, curses rather than gifts, right? And and so that's a point where. Uh, there's number one, recognizing that the devil's working on us. And number two, uh, recognizing uh, we don't deserve anything. And then when we don't deserve anything, we understand everything has been given to us. Then there's a recorrection in our way of that we view uh, this life, view these gifts uh, rather than curses, but rather as gifts. Right. And so then the answer when, when we don't feel joy isn't to sort of find something that makes you happy or even just sort of like try and look on the bright side and write down five positive things, but look for Jesus. Look, look for Jesus, because that is the source then that, that turns curses into blessings. Like this is actually the, the great reversal here, um, because we, we can say like, who are we? We are the ones who are cursed by the sin of Adam. We, we are cursed with sin. And, and he turns us into not only blessings that would receive salvation, but even blessings to each other who, who live in Christian uh, life and harmony together in the forgiveness of sins. Uh, when, when joy seems far off, uh, that's, that's a sign to double down on it. Look for Jesus there. Look, look in the word, look in the sacraments and hear the promises. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, joy is, is, is in the gifts given. Uh, it's not something that uh, is created by us. It's something that is bestowed upon us. And so, you know, I, I think part of this too is in the midst of life, the, the grind of life has ground us down, uh, seeing everything as a curse, um, overwhelmed. Uh, typically, yeah, that's either a sign of the devil working on us or we're just exhausted and tired. And that's part of it where we would sing um, the offertory from Divine Service mm -hmm. 73, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. And I find that times where, um, just frankly, when I get bitter, you know, I find when I get bitter in life and I, and I, and I get uh, my, my, my soul gets this bitterness and it's this, 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 this tension, typically that's, that's a evidence that uh, I'm, I'm, you know, the devil's working on me or that sin has been what, getting the upper hand and, and twisting things, or I'm just flat out tired. And in those times, it's it's the time where the Lord needs to refresh one, and you pray, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, so that I may see these gifts as gifts and see the joy in it, rather than ultimately, you know, seeing them as a curse. Absolutely. Pastor Richard, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison.
look forward to next time.